Again, uh, I just want to say uh, good evening, everyone, and welcome. I will say uh, it feels a little bit awkward uh, to be back on Zoom again, uh, but we did learn through the pandemic that sometimes Zoom actually works out. And for, for an event like this tonight, um, it's glad, I'm glad to see over 200 families uh, joining us. I just want to extend my big welcome uh, to you uh, from all of BRSSD. Welcome to the district. And we know that this year is going to be an outstanding year ahead. Uh, tonight, we're just going to uh, share a couple overviews of the district, why uh, we think BRSSD is such a great place uh, to teach and learn, um, as well as uh, some of the uh, support organizations that help us in the district, um, our PTAs, our uh, Education Foundation. Uh, and then most importantly, you're probably looking to get to know your principal. So we'll have some principal breakout sessions. Um, and again, just welcome. Let's go ahead and just jump in. And let me see here if I can navigate my slides. And a week from today, uh, those are the new faces, the faces that you're going to be seeing. Hopefully lots of smiles as they leave to part uh, for the first day of school. We are extremely excited uh, to welcome all of our, our new kiddos, our new families uh, to this fantastic place. And one of the mottos that we have in district is, is really seven schools in one district. And I'm going to use this uh, as the springboard for introductions. Um, I want to start by introducing two of our trustees, uh, Trustee uh, Sawarna Bopali, you guys want to just give a little wave, and Trustee Jim Howard joining us this evening, and then our principals. Uh, I'll just go across my screen, Principal uh, Gwendolyn DeWeese at Cipriani, uh, Principal Sabrina Adler at Ralston, Principal Gloria Higgins at Sandpiper, uh, our new principal, Talia Carter at Fox, uh, our principal, Carrie Amsler at Redwood Shores, uh, Principal Charles Donovan or Chuck Donovan uh, at Central, and Principal Ryan Hansen Vera at Nesbitt. Um, welcome. And a few very important uh, guests joining us tonight. Um, uh, President of School Force, our Education Foundation, Carissa Olivo, joining us. Our PTA District PTA President, Colleen Greshock, joining us. And Executive Director, Ardith Andrews, who swears she's going to stay quiet tonight. I'm not totally sure about that. Uh, is joining us uh, from School Force. And I also want to thank uh, my assistant, uh, Chris, Kirsten Ellinger, uh, who's supporting uh, the technology alongside of uh, Jerome Simon uh, this evening. So thank you very much. Again, uh, seven schools, one district. We very much like to think of ourselves as a family um, as we, we navigate and uh, work with our students and our families. So why BRSSD? And, and I usually start this with a personal uh, connection. Um, I'm still saying I'm a little bit new. This is my third year as superintendent. I, I'm, it's wearing off, right, Gloria? Uh, but three years in, I, I know that this is true at this point, um, why I selected BRSSD and why you're going to have confidence sending your kiddos uh, to us for their education. One is um, we have a very strong academic foundation. When you look at our um, achievements, uh, which you'll see in just a minute, uh, you know, you'll know that your, your children will develop a very strong foundation in math, science, social science, all of the core academic um, areas. Our kids grow up to be uh, proficient uh, learners and they thrive. Um, we have a very strong community, uh, as, as uh, Carissa, Colleen, and Ardith will share with you. Um, our PTAs are extremely involved. School Force, our education foundation, ensures that our children have access uh, to lots of extras. It's us coming together as a community uh, to support all of our learners. And also an important piece for me is kind of that 21st century mindset that, um, yes, reading, writing, math, all of those academic content areas are important. Uh, but but so are the other other areas. Um, children's ability to think critically, uh, to engage in engineering, science, technology, robotics, um, all of those other elements that we know uh, contribute to a well-rounded education. 
And then finally, uh, the, the piece I'd like to mention is, is we have structures that support teaching and learning. Uh, we are wrapping up um, our initial strategic plan uh, and looking forward to developing our new strategic plan um, this year. So I'm just gonna put uh, a plug out there uh, look for opportunities to be involved in the RSSD's new strategic plan. Um, for the past uh, several years, we've been focusing on a growth mindset for learning, a collaborative culture, uh, sustaining learning environments that, that promote capacity and innovation. You'll see examples of those here in a bit. Um, and really the idea that we're all global citizens, that, that when our children leave BRSSD and go on to Sequoia, they're gonna go on to high school, college um, and career. And really we're, we're preparing uh, individuals uh, to really function in a, in a global society. So really important uh, pieces uh, here on the elementary side. So I'm just gonna talk a little bit about our programs. Um, we have award-winning programs um, across all of our district. A few of them, uh, our schools are uh, not only state uh, distinguished schools, but also national blue ribbon schools. Um, in the county of San Mateo, they recognize the San Mateo School Boards Association recognizes innovative programs. Uh, we've uh, to date won over 38 uh, Kent Awards. Um, our students are competing in VEX Robotics. You'll see a, a picture here. They, they've competed at the world championship level um, and have done fantastic work. Um, Ralston Middle School received the Achievement and uh, Motion Award. We compete yearly at the National History Day. Uh, again, uh, our scholars are doing really well there. Uh, and of course, uh, the National Spelling Bee. Uh, we are engaged in so many different um, uh, initiatives and activities uh, where our, our students thrive. Uh, I want to talk about a couple of them in particular. Uh, the 2002 uh, California Pivotal Practice Awards. Uh, two of our school sites received these from the state of California. Um, Redwood Shores Elementary for their uh, support and their work uh, during the pandemic. Uh, to respond to students' needs. They had a team of, of educators that really came together to look at how to best pivot their practice to serve their students, um, as well as our district uh, received a district wellness um, award. Um, we are fortunate to have counselors at all of our school sites, um, again, through the support of our uh, school foundation. Uh, so that we can take care of the emotional and social emotional um, wellness of all of our students alongside uh, the academic supports as well. Um, in terms of Kent Awards, um, we had two schools receive Kent Awards this past year. Uh, Nesbitt School received uh, an award for their Puma families. Uh, and Puma families, you see the picture there, is their kind of whole school gathering, but connecting kids and families with other kids and families so that there's uh, that bond across the school. Uh, Sandpiper uh, received the Kent Award uh, for their Genius Hour, uh, modeled after Google, where, they, uh, where students uh, pursue their passions, uh, look at uh, things outside of just the typical academic day and, and are innovative and creative. So congratulations to all of our school sites that received those awards. And this one's uh, particularly meaningful. We had a group uh, that was invited to Dallas, Texas. Uh, they received the Innovate Award at the VEX Robotics Competition. And what I think about, what I think is cool about this, this photo is, is the kids that are in it, you can see their excitement. Um, yes, they competed with their masks and all, um, but also I wanna point out their mentor. Uh, their mentor who is now in high school was a BRSSD student. Our students come back um, and they contribute uh, to the, to the uh, community. So uh, really glad to see that. And I think that's just um, outstanding work. As I mentioned, um, academic performance, uh, we are extremely proud of how our students uh, perform on state measures. Um, as you know, the state has uh, four or five um, components on their gauge. The green and the blue are the top uh, of, of each um, areas. You see that in la English language arts, 
and in math, all of our students across the board. Uh, when we say all, we mean all. Um, all of our students are um, at the green and the blue as an aggregate. That is something we are extremely proud of and um, are continued, continuing to build upon. And now I'm gonna pass uh, the torch uh, to Trustee Bopali, uh, who's gonna talk to us about the importance of parent participation. Good evening, and thank you, Superintendent Aguara. I'm so pleased to join you all this evening for the new family orientation and to provide you with information on the importance of parent participation. I'm gonna share with you tonight some of my own reflections on volunteering, and hopefully that will inspire you all to engage and volunteer in our school district as well. As you can see from the bullet points on the slide, there are many ways to volunteer in the classroom, on PTA, on School Force, which is our education foundation. You're gonna hear more about that. On district-wide committees, or even as a school board trustee. I'm gonna talk briefly about these and tell you a little bit about my own journey um, and why I believe uh, parent participation is so vital. So uh, again, my name is Suwarna Bhopali. I've been serving on the Belmont Redwood Shore School District for the past nine years. But even before running for my first election in 2013, when my kids were three and five years old, they're much older now, uh, I was a very involved parent in our schools as a room parent, an art in action docent, and a member of the site council. I truly enjoyed volunteering in the classroom, not only because I was able to get to know my children's teachers well, but also because I could interact with my children's classmates and their parents. And like a, a lot of you, when you're new to a school, creating that sense of community is so important. It's important to the well being of your children and yourself. Another way that I got to know the community was attending PTA meetings and then serving on the PTA board. And over the years, because of my legal training, I served in various positions like parliamentarian, parliamentarian and middle school liaison. But the friendships that I made with PTA parent colleagues were invaluable, and I'm good friends with them today over a decade later. I so enjoyed collaborating with PTA parents to bring about enrichment programs like robotics, um, as Superintendent Degara mentioned, and others as well. Uh, but later in that first year of mine in the school district, my child's uh, school principal asked me to join a district-wide committee as a parent representative. It was called the No Boundary Committee because at that time, our district was in the midst of a surge in enrollment and various options for school assignment were being discussed. Our district had grown over 70% in 14 years. Um, thankfully, I can tell you our enrollment has now plateaued, so we're not in that surge. But I really enjoyed participating in that committee and in those discussions because I was able to meet parents from all the other school sites learn about the various programs in our district. I also got to know school board members, um, which is how I, I um, actually was inspired to run in 2013. I'm so honored to serve as a trustee in our district um, to represent the voices of our students, teachers, staff, and community to make substantive changes such as building our K-8 schools at Nesbitt and Sandpiper and to move forward policies like our strategic planning efforts. But I'll tell you in whatever way that suits your family, suits your schedule, I just wanna make one message clear. Volunteering in our school district is so important, in any school district for that matter. Your volunteering contributes to our school communities. It creates a sense of connectedness for yourself and a sense of well-being for your children, which is so important, especially as we've realized um, during the pandemic and post-pandemic uh, we'll see as well. Uh, and if you do all those things, I promise you, you will have a really good time doing it. You will make some very good friends. Um, and now I wanna turn it over to my very good friend and colleague, uh, Dr. Jim Howard. Thank you, Swarna. Um, I, I pretty much am gonna say the same thing. I think that um, I'm so excited and happy for you all to be starting school for the first time for some of you or starting a new district for some of you. Uh, it really is a special place and um, I encourage you very much to just jump in, get involved, 
um, participate as much as possible, build community. Um, we really are better together than we are as individuals. And uh, that's a theme you'll see in uh, Belmont Redwood Shores again and again from how we uh, deal with fundraising and how we um, make our schools better and just enjoy our classrooms and, and support our teachers and our kids. It, it really is a special time and a special place. And I'm so happy that you're gonna be part of our community. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Swarna. I'm going to go ahead and I just want to take a moment to also recognize and, and unfortunately opening doors wasn't able to join us tonight, uh, but we also have uh, what we call opening doors PTA. Um, opening doors is a PTA group that's uh, specific uh, for children or families with children. Uh, that have special needs. I just want to put that out there. We'll be sharing more information on how to connect with them, and this presentation will be available. Uh, but you can visit um, openingdoorspta.org uh, for more information and, um, uh, and information. We'll, we'll pass that along as, as we're able to as well. I want to take a moment uh, to address a big question in education that always comes up. Um, I think it's important as, as new families are learning um, about how different school districts operate. Um, one of the things uh, that's that's interesting, I'll say to say the least in California, is really uh, the funding of schools. And um, most folks uh, feel that you know property taxes are the primary drivers of education funding uh, in their school districts. Um, which is true, but it's much more complicated uh, than that. Property taxes and taxes are part of how uh, school districts are funded. Um, and um, it's complicated when you factor in the number of students uh, that live in, in specific demographics. And um, uh, what the state does is they look at a minimum funding guarantee and per student, and then they look at um, how much property taxes are flowing into a school district um, or area. And when we look at that funding formula and the per student allocation, um, BRSSD comes in uh, right around $9,900 per student. And um, this is um, quite honestly at the bottom when you look at um, other districts in San Mateo County. And part of it has to do with, you know, when you look at the top um, high, um, high income in terms of taxes, uh, say at Woodside Elementary, but also um, fewer numbers of students. And what that translates to is more spending uh, per student. And here in BRSSD, we've been really thoughtful um, about how we support and, and the types of education that we want to provide um, our students. Hence, um, uh, in this last election cycle, we, we put on the ballot measure C, uh, which was a $292 parcel tax. Yes, uh, thank you very much to our community uh, for supporting that. I think the uh, final approval was right around 75% there. Uh, we appreciate that uh, support, um, and that is the support of our community. That equates to about um, $900 per student coming into our district, um, which um, helps us uh, with the programs and services uh, that we provide. Uh, the other piece that um, our community thoughtfully um, organized was uh, School Force, which is our education foundation, uh, which contributes another two and a half million dollars uh, per year uh, to our schools uh, in support of the things that we really value. And, and next slide kind of talks about that. Um, libraries, um, music and science, professional development, counselors, all of the nice to have things that we believe uh, contribute to a well-rounded education. So um, I, I wanna start by saying thank you um, because it's all of us coming together to ensure that our kids uh, get the absolute best education that I will say rivals any private school out there. So um, thank you, thank you to our community. Um, we have some really important guests, uh, as I shared with you, um, uh, Carissa and Colleen with PTA and School Force or School Force and PTA. Um, I'm going to turn it over to you for a little bit more information. I'm 
everyone. Thank you. Um, my name is Colleen Greshoff, and I am the VRSSD PTA Council President. So I served as the Fox PTA President for two years, and I have two uh, twin sons who are st starting at Ralston Middle School next week. In my role as PTA Council President, I help facilitate the collaboration among all seven of the district VRSSD schools. And our family actually moved to Belmont about five years ago uh, because of the great schools. That's one of the reasons why we chose uh, to live here. And right away, we knew it was just such a special community full of welcoming people and that all the schools were terrific. And so I'm really excited uh, for those of you who are dialed in tonight, as has mentioned earlier, um, because a, a great community awaits you. Carissa? Yeah. Um, I'm Carissa. I have two kids that went through Central and Ralston with my youngest in her eighth grade year. I've been volunteering in our schools for 11 years in the classroom, on a PTA board, and now as president of School Force. Colleen and I are both transplants from the East Coast who love our great schools and community, but came to understand that California State funding structure does not support the quality education that we want for all Belmont Redwood Shores kids. When you look around our schools, some of the things that you expect to be there, librarians, counselors, specialists to, to support struggling readers, and introduction of STEAM early are in our schools because of parent donations. Next slide. Parents make a difference. School Force and PTA have hundreds of district parent volunteers, and we've raised over $3.5 million last year for Belmont Redwood Shore School students. The Education Commitment Campaign, which runs from August 1st to October 31st, is a key component of our success. During the ECC, our PTAs and school force ask for parent donations that make a direct and significant impact on our schools. So we encourage you to donate at whatever level is possible for you. The suggested donation is $1,800 per student and your donation supports both, both the PTA and school force. The first $250 of your donation per child, regardless of how much you donate, goes first to your child's school PTA. The PTA needs to raise our funds by October 31st since we purchased the supplies and pay for the experiences in the current school year. The remainder of your donation goes to school force. So together, the PTA and School Force collaboration provides each student with the most well-rounded educational experience possible. So I just wanted to go a little bit more into the specifics about how our two organizations work together and our partnership. We have two very distinct yet collaborative roles in our district. So we work hand in hand, and this partnership has been key to each school's long-term success. For instance, the PTA pays for all of our students' school supplies. There are no back to school shopping lists. You don't have to you know, get that list from the teacher and go run out to Target or, or Costco. When your child arrives on the first day of school, all of their supplies will be waiting for them. And these are ordered by the teachers and paid for by parent donations. But then you have school force who pays for all the Chromebooks, they pay for the software, they pay for the monitors, they pay for the technology in the classroom. Also wanna give an example of field trips. So field trips, the PTA covers the admission costs. Every student gets a ticket, all right? The PTA pays for that. But then school force pays for the transportation. They're responsible for the buses. Another example are libraries. The PTA buys the books, but school force pays the librarians. There's so many examples that you know we could go on and on about, but the bottom line is our schools are able to provide a high level of academic excellence and experiences because of this long-term partnership between these two entities, PTA and School Force. Uh, next slide, please. 
I'm just going to talk a little bit more about what the PTA fund, since that's my domain as PTA Council President. So the PTA is all about culture and community. So we work really hard in building a welcoming school community for all of our kids. We pride ourselves in cultivating an inclusive, vibrant culture at each school that includes parents, teachers, and students. So in addition to the school supplies I mentioned and the field trips, there's assemblies, uh, the PTA pays for and hosts community building events that are school-wide and classroom specific. Some examples are talent shows, science fairs, um, book fairs, welcome back barbecues, ice cream socials, so much more. And some of you are going to be experiencing them very soon in the next few days. Next slide. Next slide. Uh, Carissa is going to talk a little bit about school force. Um, so this gives you a pie chart to look a little bit about the breakdown of um, the requests that we've gotten from the district and how that those funds might be spent, uh, will, will be spent uh, next year. School force funds are built into the district's budget each year and uh, pay for the people and programs and the big picture, those librarians, reading specialists, and school counselors, et cetera. An investment in staff is the most important investment and indicator of student success. Our suggested donation for school force alone per student is 1550, which is slight, which is similar or slightly lower than in our neighboring school districts. So during the ECC, the 1800 is the combined suggested donations of uh, the PTA at $250 and the 1550 of uh, school force suggested donation per student. Um, so uh, could we move to the next slide? Uh, so uh, because that, uh, uh, oh, here, I've lost my note. All right, so here I wanted to give you a sense of the that we have our joint campaign um, that runs from August and to October when we partner with, with the PTAs through the ECC. Uh, but it's going to take us a little bit longer to raise those funds for um, to pay for the people and uh, programs. So we will um, continue to fundraise uh, for School Force after October 31st. Um, some examples of, of, of campaigns that we will have are the Friends and Family Readathon that is expected to be in January, and then also um, our fun um, gala and auction. Um, in uh, on March 31st. Okay. Let's see. Next okay. slide. Next slide. So how can you support your school community? So we really welcome you to join our community by volunteering throughout the school year and also donating during this ECC education commitment campaign time period. The money pays for the experiences, salaries, programs, and supplies that Carissa and I have been talking about. And you'll see firsthand soon at your child's school what that all means. So if you're interested in volunteering your time with the PTA and School Force, we have many opportunities for you. Whether you can donate a lot of time or a little time, there are so many ways to support your individual school and also the district as a whole. And you'll learn more about these volunteer opportunities when school starts next week, but then we also are going into uh, site-specific breakout sessions soon. Uh, so you might, might hear some more opportunities for how you can get involved. And I just wanted to add that, you know, we are so lucky to live in this community that consistently steps up and asks, what more can I do? How can I help our kids? What do you need? Um, those are questions heard here all the time. And we are just so lucky to have this, you know, can do attitude in our district. And you'll see that soon. And one sure fire way to just jump right in and to start supporting the schools is, of course, by donating. And then also signing up to volunteer, you'll meet so many people and I promise you won't regret it. Last slide for us. Great, thank you, Colleen. Thank you, Carissa. Um, I just, you know, I wanna say as, as a, you know, putting my parent lens onto, um, if you have new fam, if you're a new family coming into school, um, you're gonna find that so many of your relationships that you build 
actually come through the schools. Um, your friend, your your kiddos' friends become your friends, um, and and you really build that sense of community uh, through your kids and through your schools, and uh, just magic happens. Um, so with that, let's see here. Um, I want to thank you so much for joining us tonight. But the evening is not over. Um, it's actually probably uh, just getting started, and maybe. Uh, the reason you're you're joining us tonight, really, to get to know your school site um, and your principals. All of our principals have uh, put together some informational pieces for you, um, and we're going to um, address that through breakout sessions. Um, and the breakout session is a separate webinar that's school specific. I'm going to put those um, links in the chat here in just a second. Uh, before I do that, I want to uh, thank our principals for joining us tonight. Um, go ahead and get your other breakout sessions uh, started, and folks will be joining you in just a minute or two. Thank you. Um, and I just want to um, do a couple of quick announcements. Um, at this time of the year, part of our enrollment process is, is our process is to assign families uh, to one of the two closest schools. Uh, uh, to their home. Um, sometimes that doesn't align with family preferences exactly. Um, and there's the opportunity to transfer via intra uh, transfer requests. Uh, we're still processing those. So if you're holding on that, uh, just know that, that um, we're working really hard to make sure um, everybody has a great start on the first day. Um, but uh, that's kind of as a, as space is available. So uh, know that we're reaching out to families as we're able to accommodate requests and just appreciate your patience. Um, the first, actually, I was going to say the first, tomorrow and Friday, uh, we're distributing antigen test kits. We want to have a safe return for school. Uh, please make sure you pick up your COVID tests either tomorrow or Friday. Uh, information's on the district calendar. It's either at Redwood Shores uh, tomorrow morning or Ralston on Friday afternoon. Uh, we're encouraging all families to test students prior to the start of school on Wednesday um, and again on Sunday uh, for that uh, second second week of school or first full week of school. And then finally, you're going to see some communication uh, from me just before the start of school. I'm asking you to submit your first day of school photos uh, so that we can do a little uh, photo montage uh, to share with our community. Please snap those first day of pictures uh, and share them uh, with us uh, so that we can share them with our community. And with that, I just want to thank you so very much for joining us this evening.